So we have a movie that just came out. Let, let's go right into it. No off the tops, no nothing. So um, we have a movie that just was released uh, last week. And that is Ant-Man and the Wasp. And so, I mean, it's made its money and it's going to make its money. Um, so this comes from... so. By the way, if you want to go back and watch our spoiler cast, you can go do that. That is here on the channel. Um, so, DHR came out with an article today about how this could deliver a cautionary box office win for Marvel Studios. Now, you say, box a cautionary tale? What the hell are they talking about? Well, and yes, it made $120 million opening weekend. So, what this it talks about... And it's a four-day weekend and everything else. But what this talks about is that this movie could just fall off a cliff. And so right now it's got a 47% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, which is tied for one of the worst in Eternals, which came out last year. Also it got a B cinema score from audiences. And that's one of the very few titles do so. And actually broke a streak of... 21 movies that actually did that. So they're talking about nearly um, a 60 to 70% drop for this movie after one week. Um, now, in recent films, okay, of the first of the last five films, none of earned less than a B minus on cinema score, which, which you know is important. And they've all opened to huge, huge um, numbers. I mean, Doctor Strange opened to 170 million. You had Thor: Love and Thunder open to about 130 million. Um, so it's one of those things where this could really, you could see like a 60 or a 70 or even a 75 percent drop um, from week one to week two. So let me ask you, Kyle. Number one, do you think it's going to drop that much? And number two. What happens if it does? I think it's very possible that it has a huge second weekend drop. It's especially when any movie opens with a hundred plus opening weekend. And then you tend to see the 50 to 60% drop in its her like future. But um, I, I, I'm still kind of unsure on how it's going to go because the audience score on Rotten Tomatoes is pretty positive. It's about 84% on Rotten Tomatoes in terms of its audience score. And I could still see many people, general movie going audience, is still enjoying this film. It's not like Babylon, where that movie, it's, it has a very small minority of, um, you know, people that really love it. Like, there's a huge, I think, group of people that will love Quantumania that watch it. It's not a type. It's not the type of movie that when you see, unless you're, you know, maybe expecting something more but it pretty much gives you what you're expecting to see from it an ant-man story with the quantum realm um what wait, what was your second question so my second question was this i mean do you think that it's it's one of those things where um well let me ask you this question just in general do you think that quantum or do you think that i mean i know this is a stretch and there is some big hype about it, and we're going to be talking about a story in a couple of minutes about it. Do you think Cocaine Bear could actually, because of the drop, because of the rating on Rotten Tomatoes, because of the cinema score, do you think it could actually uh, beat Ant-Man? No. Do you know why? The main reason why is Cocaine Bear's radar. Hmm. Okay. And that is a huge huge difference in this equation because I think if Ant-Man drops 
you know, a significant amount, what it drops to about 40 million next weekend. Mm -hmm. I don't see Cocaine Bear making 40, especially given that it's an R rated, you know, film that has a very niche audience. I mean, you have like a fun audience going to see it, see it, but you can't take the kids to it. Of course. I think a lot of older folks won't want to see it regardless and I feel like what Megan made about thirty million opening weekend. Yeah, or give or take. Around that give or match. Take. So it even Megan didn't make as much. Though I believe I think Megan was rated PG thirteen. No, no, no. It was it was R. It was it R. It was? Okay. Yeah. I, but um I don't know. I, I do I do want to touch upon a couple things you said earlier though, because when you look at the numbers for Quantum Mania and you compare it to, like, say, a Thor Love and Thunder, a Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Doctor Strange, these are very different situations. These are, I mean, in terms of Thor and Black Panther, way more popular characters and IP franchises than the Ant Man franchise. And with Doctor Strange, Doctor Strange is, a, I would say, like an anon, and an, an, how do you say, it? anomaly. Yeah. That because basically what Doctor Strange was is, it was this multiverse film that had just released after No Way Home, which was a huge box office success. It was marketed in a way to make you think it was a continuation of No Way Home, which it really wasn't, and. It starred Scarlet Witch, Wanda Maximoff, the star of the biggest TV show of 2021, which was WandaVision. So there were a lot of things going into Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness, that I think boosted it. Where Quantumania, and I've always said this on this channel, and I think you and Tyler both were like doubting me and you were saying, oh, people are going to see it for Kang. People are going to see it for Kang. And I never believe that because Kang is not a pop culture character in any sense. The general movie-going audience does not know who Kang the Conqueror is. They may have seen something on Loki, but even in Loki, he wasn't even called Kang the Conqueror. He was called He Who Remains. There is a big distinction between what the general movie going audience is going to see and what, you know, hardcore MCU fans are going to see. And I think the thing with Ant Man is at the end of the day, the Ant Man movie, despite it being a film that was connected to the MCU, was a movie that starred many characters that we had seen before in the MCU. It wasn't an MCU film that I think a lot of people were as hyped about, like say a Doctor Strange or a Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. And the thing about this movie is I still think that the numbers it made are actually really good because you're seeing that it, in terms of Ant-Man openings, it's just gone up and up. So more people are interested in this franchise than ever before. Um, but with this second week drop this will be very telling on what general movie going audiences think of this movie because i mean personal problems aside though like i i usually would see an mcu film a second time the week after i see it opening weekend i still haven't seen ant-man and the wasp Wasp, Quantumania, for a second time. Now, I kind of do want to see it again, but I'm not rushing out to see it again for a second time like I did with Wakanda Forever, like I did with Doctor Strange, like I did with, um, heck, even Thor Love and Thunder. <laughs> and um, uh, that could be also telling of the film itself. So there's a number of, you know, things to discuss when it comes to this movie but next weekend will definitely be where we you know pay attention because i believe thor love and thunder had a 68 percent second weekend drop 
And that was a huge deal because that showed you a lot of people were not happy with that film. Um, but yes, uh, I think the, the drop will be larger. I just, I don't know, you know, how much you can compare it to other films when I think generally going into it, this film wasn't as, you know, talked about or discussed as a Wakanda forever or a multiverse of madness. So, yeah, no, I, I don't know. I mean, I think that when you have a movie like an Ant-Man, a um, couple things. Number one, I think that once you get to a point that people, I mean, we're 15 years, over 30 films into this, people are going to go see the movies regardless. Okay. It doesn't matter if they're, it's good or bad. And I think Marvel's gotten to the point where, and I've said this before, where I think they could just, with, I would rather see quality over quantity. So instead of, let's say, 10 television series and films together, put out five, but make it good. That being said, $100 million, $120 million is really good, considering that, you know, like I said, Doctor Strange made almost 190 which by the way, almost made a billion dollars worldwide. Thor 11 Thunder made almost $800 million worldwide. Um, I think that... I, I think the drop two is going to be there, right? It's always going to be there. Um, if this drops... Look, if this drops 50%, that's... that's they're, they're, they'll be lucky. Because of the fact that they have... Um, I mean, the problems, and we've we've discussed it here on the channel, and everybody else has too, that this is one of those things that, you know, this really wasn't that good of a film, okay? It really, really wasn't, but they got away with it, and they're able to get away with it now. Um, so a 60% drop, I could see it, and, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. I mean, to your point, I think Cocaine Bear is going to be fun. It's not going to be, and that's what it is. It's a fun movie. It's a fun, it's like a um, violent night, if you will. Okay, it's a it's a fun, violent, you know, violent, bloody, you know, mixture. So, but let me ask you guys, what do you guys think? Do you think that, you know, this it's a significant drop? You know, do you think the significant drop tells you something about Ant-Man and the Wasp? Um, did you guys go to see Ant-Man and the Wasp? If you did, how many times have you seen it? What format did you see it? When did you see it? Leave your thoughts down in the comments section for us and we'll get back to you.